this talk will be by Orpita Mitra and she will be talking about non-relativistic scaling media and free theories on chord background. So let's listen. So I would like to thank the organizer for uh, inviting me to give a talk here title is Solid Versus Scaling Period Field Theories on Karp Background. This talk is based on this paper, which is already mentioned by my previous speaker, my co-supervisor. So my motivation is like uh, my supervisor and my co-supervisor has already presented that uh, we were trying to get a minimally coupled uh, field, non relativistic field theories to a Karp background. So my motivation is to include scale transformation in that process, in that localization procedure, such that I can, or uh, we can achieve a um, uh, scale ingredient field theories coupled to non-relativistic curve background. So for that thing, at first I was, um, I gave a brief description, description of the neutral curtain geometry. Neutral curtain geometry is the well-known non-relativistic curve background. Then I have. Uh, discuss about non-relativistic scale symmetry or dilatation. Then I uh, emphasis on the procedure of localization of the Galilean symmetry and dilatation on, in non-relativistic field theory. And then I discuss the results um, uh, which came from this localization procedure. That is, one is we achieved non-relativistic diffeomorphism invariants. Then we identified the calf background as widely scale Newton curtain gravity. And then we um, can comment about the conformal incompressible fluid on this background. So my motivation was to derive that scale invariant theory is minimally coupled to car backgrounds. Car backgrounds, in this case, have some relevance in condensator systems, which was emphasized in 2006 by Son and Weinungert. They have analyzes uh, trapped gas and unitary systems in using this card background analysis. Then um, scale invariant field theory so has been has also uh, many applications in non-relativistic literature, which was uh, discussed by Jack Yu, et al. and Bartman, especially in two plus one dimension, who so this uh, scale invariant flat space time or scale invariant any theories helps to describe iron of bomb effect, then uh, trapped gas, then uh, fractional quantum Hall effect in two plus one dimensions, which is elaborately discussed in a book, Fratkin, in condensed matter field theories. And, um, that then uh, it is also discussed that uh, the systems with uh, critical points have a hydrodynamic description, which can be used as a gauge gravity, uh, fluid gravity correspondence or in a description of a condensed matter system, which was fast. Uh, discussed by Hoelberg in 1977, who said that the criticality, the criticality or the coefficient, transport coefficient at critical point can be determined by the temperature dependence, and which in which uh, mention, which maintain the uh, scale invariant things. And in uh, other cases also, there is a when uh, we are considering the quantum theories, the scale invariance has been broken in quantum theories, which was discussed by Bartman, Bartman in his thesis that the is a generator quantum anomaly and which gives a which gives a non-conservation of particle number, which can be also an important thing to discuss. So at first I am emphasizing on neutron curtain, the basic description of neutron curtain geometry. Neutron curtain geometry is a curtain's covariant space-time deformulation of the classical Newtonian theory of gravity, which is already discussed by my previous speakers. So now neutron curtain uh, geometry actually is a non-relativistic manifold characterized by a degenerate inverse spatial metric and a degenerate temporal one form which satisfies these relations that covariant derivative acting on the inverse spatial, inverse spatial metric and the temporal metric is zero, and the inverse spatial metric or temporal one form are orthogonal to each other. As H mu nu and tau mu nu are degenerate, their inverse do not exist. So for that reason, we need to define them, the tau mu inverse and H mu nu lower in such a way 
that tau nu tau nu is follow one, it gives ones, and uh, h mu nu and tau nu gives zero. The important thing is that here delta mu nu is defined in this way, which is different from the relativistic one. And the projector is also has different uh, form with respect to the, if I am uh, comparing with relativistic one. So this new number uh, geometry is uh, having a linear symmetric connection which can be given in this way. So first part is a uh, inertial part of the connection, but the second part is non-inertial part because it has a two matrix and there are two different two different matricity condition that grad mu h mu equal to zero and grad mu tau mu equal to zero. So the connection can't be determined uniquely by those two relations for which I need a one form to make it unique. So K lambda mu is a one form and this is coming from as a uh, source of a Newtonian potential. For K lambda mu is a two form and it's coming from a source of a potential and if this is giving the non-inertial part of the connection. And as this theory has a connection, so we can uh, talk about the demand tensor which can be evaluated in the following general way that we will take the commutator up to grad mu or grad mu's and it will give the demand tensor. For a symmetric Newton garden connection, these relations are followed. But if the Newton garden connection has to follow the Newtonian proper Newtonian limit, then the additional condition is required. That is also known as a Trotman condition in the Loyal literature. This is equivalent to the DK, which was the K was uh, initially introduced as a non-inertial part. So DK equal to zero, which implies that K lambda mu can be expressed in that way. The residence corresponding to this Riemann tensor gives this, which is R mu equal to 4 pi rho tau mu tau mu, and this is the proper Newtonian condition. And following this um, geometry and other de definitions, I can also calculate but it can also be shown that h mu nu varies in that way and the covalent derivative uh, acts on h mu in this way. Now I will talk about the non-relativistic scale symmetries. Unlike relativistic systems, non-relativistic systems scale anisotropically. There are uh, many types of uh, scale transformation has been discussed in non-relativistic things, non-relativistic literature. But I was I was talking, I was just emphasizing on two aspects which is well known in the literature. So first one is Lipsky scaling, where the T has been rescaled by well, with respect to the space. There is one more dynamical exponent z. This is called dynamical exponent, and here the scale and uh, the space and time are uh, rescaling anisotropically. The infinite maximal version of this scale transformation <coughs> can take a form of this way where S is the parameter of the scale transformation. If the transformation is global, then S is constant. The generator of the scaling transformation for Lipschitz scaling is that way, the T is equal to minus Zt del T and plus minus Xi del T. If I am considering Galilean plus scale and special conformal transformation, that gives a total sort of the symmetric group, which is known as a proper conformal group. And the algebra corresponding this is known as Schrodinger algebra, uh, which is actually a conformal extension of Barmer algebra. Barmer algebra has been already discussed by my guy, by my supervisor, and Barmer algebra is the central extension of Galilean algebra. That is another way of looking at uh, non-relativistic scaling is Galilean conformal algebra, which was discussed by Bakshi and Rajesh Kumar in 2009. The generator for non-relativistic scaling in Galilean conformal algebra is in that way, where the space and time are scaling uniformly like the relativistic case. So Galilean conformal algebra has the equal number of generators like the relativistic case, where the Schrodinger group has uh, 12 generators, S3 generators less than the relativistic group. Now I will proceed to the localization procedure where I have introduced, uh, include uh, dilatation with Galilean symmetry. So it is uh, the, descript the procedure has been already discussed by, by my previous speaker. So I have considered at first a non-relativistic model and which is invariant under the global Galilean transformation and global scale transformation. Where I0 is taking form in that way. And Xi is that toy. So here I have considered z equal to 2 because Schrodinger field theory is invariant under z equal to 2 dilatation or Lipschitz scaling. 
under the general coordinate transformation, the axial changes by delta S. So if I want the invariance, so delta L has to, uh, triangle L has to be vanished, that is vanished or it has to be a total derivative which can be expressed in this way. <coughs> Where delta 0 is the form variation. So in the complex scalar field of infinite space is an example of this kind of a scale invariant theory. This is uh, for z is equal to 2, the theory is invariant under scale transformation is this, where del mu j mu is 5s for 3 plus 1 dimension. For the Galilean transformation, the del mu j mu is 0, so but here this del mu j mu is equal to 5s, so I have to take more precautions to calculate it properly. So I found that delta L equal to 0 provided <coughs> delta 0 phi transform in that way, phi varies in that way and the space uh, derivative and time derivative of delta 0 phi is behaving in this way. Xi0 and Xi I have mentioned earlier. Now we start the localization procedure. So at the start of localization procedure I have to do like the parameters of for uh, corresponding every transformation so when it is global case they depend they are constant they don't depend on space on time but for the localization they will depend on space and time but remembering the absolute nature of Newtonian time I took that time will transform the, trans, the transformation in time will only depend on time and space for space the, it will depend on both space and time so parameters for this case are depending on both space and time and here the lambda are defend, depending on only time but it has to remember that at the flat limit, the lambda has to be 2s. So after, if I am considering this local transformation, I can find that the action is not no longer insufficient <coughs> under the local transformations because the covariant derivatives are not uh, varying properly. They are not uh, giving a covariant uh, nature. So for that reason, to return the invariance, I involve two kind of a covariant derivative. First case covariant derivative was introduced with respect to the local uh, with global coordinate where B fields are already introduced to incorporate the change due to localization of the Galilean transformation and now C field has introduced together with this B field to incorporate the change for scale transformation. But these definitions are insufficient because DK phi and DT phi do not vary covariantly. They don't give the invariance of Lagrangian under these transformations. So to remedy this, we proceed in two steps. First, we introduce local spatial coordinates corresponding to the global space coordinates, where A is the local coordinate. For spatial, spatial index, it's only taking 1, 2, 3. And for, then I am introducing additional covariant derivative with respect to local uh, coordinate local coordinate and that is in that way which was already discussed in my previous like uh, previous pictures so grad 0 phi is sigma 0 0 dt phi plus sigma 0 k dk phi and grad a phi is sigma <coughs> f k dk phi here sigma 0 0 is assumed to depend only on time because of its absolute nature of um, time in newtonian case so we can find that grad a phi is uh, behaving covariantly in that way, provided the additional gauge fields were introduced in the through the covariant derivative B k C k and sigma A k heading accordingly. Similarly, the temporal covariant derivative plus zero phi would also do the same, provided the variations of this additional gauge field satisfy these relations. Now I will define the inverse of sigma fields which are defined in that way. In the following step we will do that we will replace the partial derivatives to the covariant derivatives and then we will get the modified Lagrangian. But we can find that the, this modified Lagrangian is not invariant and uh, till is not still invariant. So we have to incorporate the change in measure due to this coordinate transformation. So the change in measure will be accompanied in that way. So I, we can find that this uh, lambda will take a expression of determinant of lambda mu alpha where lambda mu alpha is the uh, inverse of sigma mu alpha. And it is also Jacobian for the Galilean and the scale transformations. So here the localization procedure is completed. We have already replaced the partial derivatives by the covariant derivatives and then we consider the change in measure for the action and following this whole procedure we got the action invariant under the local Galilean and scale transformation in that way. 
if I am considering a sorting jar uh, as an example, then just modifying the, or making the expression of it, I will get this. Now we will uh, talk about the results of this localization procedure. First result is non deterministic diffeomorphism. So I am assuming that the time trans, uh, the change in time is zero. So there is only change in space coordinate. And it is evident that epsilon and lambda are vanishing because I am considering sigma 0, 0 is constant. And for simplicity, I am taking sigma 0, 0 is 1. Then I am defining a spatial metric tensor that is that way. That h i j equal to delta c t lambda c i lambda d j. And variation of lambda a k also can be calculated from the previous results from which I can derive the h i variation of h i j, which is a proper covariant variation of h i j. But there is a difference from the normal neutral pattern one. Here is a one more scale. This uh, this term is uh, coming due to the scale transformation. The inverse metric is defined in following way. And uh, uh, again, the variation of H k l can be calculated. And again, this term, the extra term is coming due to inclusion of the scale term. So the action, uh, incorporating these all facts, the action reduces to this thing. And for Schrodinger case, I can simplify it using the using the definition of gratify to this action. So this action can be interpreted as a massive matter field with both the Galilean and scale symmetries coupled to a non-relativistic curve background. Now I will, now my motivation is like to identify the curve background with a geometry to give a geometric structure to this curve background. So for this, I will first identify some fields introduced at the covariant derivatives. So I'll geometric, um, it's already discussed in the previous lectures that uh, when I am localizing the Galilean symmetry, I am getting a Newton Cartan geometry as I am including a scale transformation here. And for relativistic case, I can assume that the, there will be some change. And it has been shown that the change is uh, corresponds to a wild scale Newton Cartan geometry. So here I will give a covariant notation, a geometry, covariant geometric notation. So sigma alpha mu will be the VLVL fields and the uh, inverse spatial metric will be defined in terms of this VLVL fields. The spatial component is already introduced in the time of non-relativistic diffeomorphism invariance. And now the temporal one form can also be defined in terms of the inverse VLVL field where it uh, can be noted that uh, only time part is exist. So lambda 0, 0 is not equal to 0, but the other spatial part are 0. So now to uh, fulfill the full <coughs> geometric structure, we have to introduce a connection. The connection can be introduced as uh, following the fear wave postulates. But this fear wave postulate is different as, uh, okay, from the Newton Cartan case because I have to incorporate the change of scale transformation where the time is getting discussed two times with respect to the space coordinate. So here time is getting, so for that reason, here the coefficients are different for two cases. This is for the time part and this is for the spatial part. So from the behavioral postulate, uh, after a little modification, we can get that the temporal part is behaving in that way. And it's already discussed that B0 mu B is vanishes for the Galilean transformation because there is no boost in the uh, time transformation. So it directly leads that how the covariant derivative <coughs> acts on the temporal one form and gives this relation. So for the Newton Cartan geometry, we have already found that that mu w equal to 0, so that gives a matrix, matricity condition. But here, due to the incorporation of scale transformation, the non matricity is generating, which is expected from the relativistic case also. There also, the scale transformation gives the uh, non matricity. So now I will uh, follow the spatial part of the VLBN postulate and I can assume that how the spatial inverse metric, uh, the covariant derivative is acting on the spatial inverse metric. So I am getting again the same condition. There is also normaticity is coming. So that mu h rho sigma is 2 b mu h rho sigma. Here I can find the temporal metric. The tau mu was a temporal one form. So that uh, time metric will be tau mu nu, which is b is tau mu and tau mu. And that mu acting on that total time temporal metric will be 4 b mu. So the matrix, uh, the rescaling of metric is also following the same thing that the anisotropic in the in the scale, the time has been rescaled by two times with respect to space. So now I will define the respective inverses of the matrix, which is h nu rho and tau rho apart. In addition, these definitions can be shown to satisfy the orthogonality relation 
between the spatial matrix and temporal matrices. So it is clear that due to incorporation of the scale, there is no pro there is no problem in uh, satisfying this relation, this basic relations of Newton Cartan geometry. They are holding here. From this VLBL uh, postulate, I can get the expression for connection also in that way. And to get a familiar expression for Newton Cartan geometry, I have to do a little <coughs> mathematical I have to do a, a math mathematical calculation, and then this expression can generate this part where the symmetric connection is expressed in that way, in this way. So this term, this term and this term is already present for the newton cartan uh, geometry and this term is coming for the incorporation of scale. Here we have to remember that delta rho mu is uh, incorporating the space and time part together, which I have mentioned here. And the K has been already defined in a similar way like we have defined in the uh, newton cartan case. The nature is same, but now the fields are modified due to incorporation of the scale. So defining connection, now I can proceed to define a demand tensor of the for this connection, which will be uh, determined with this following, evaluating this relationship. And But this curvature tensor, the so demand tensor, the Ricci scalar, are not inferior to the, the scale transformation. So for that reason, I need uh, more, I need to define one more tensor, which is a wild tensor. So wild tensor I construct but this will have to big mathematical expression for the reason I haven't put here. <laughs> so for the following this procedure, I derived the scale invariant background and I have shown that the scale invariant curve background is um, satisfying all the properties of a wild distal Newton pattern geometry. Now we'll, I will uh, proceed to fluid dynamics because I have already mentioned <laughs> that uh, the Systems with critical points behave hydrodynamically at uh, behave hydrodynamically. So I uh, and there is a uh, already in Kartik Prabhu and Gerasi they have discussed that how fluid dynamics on a Newton Cartan background is uh, important to describe some condensed systems. So at first I will analyze some basic relations of the Newton Cartan background, fluid dynamics of the Newton Cartan background, which is already discussed in Punzel, Prabhu and these papers. So there are the, the non-native constitutive, constitutive relations for the non-nativistic fluid are the continuity equation, the momentum conservation equation, and the energy conservation equation, which in the covariant notation can be written in terms of T mu nu and J mu. But the description of a non-nativistic fluid requires a choice of fluid uh, velocity. For this purpose, we consider a fluid velocity u mu, which is a sort of co-moving, so that means u mu is in the direction of tau alpha. There are many arbitrary choices also, but for simplicity I have chosen this uh, chosen this one. And uh, the u mu has been defined in that way, that u mu is uh, given, uh, after conducting with tau mu, it's giving one and it's orthogonal to h mu. So the action of the neutral cotton covariant derivative acting on the vector field v mu lambda is given in that way, which will be useful in the later calculation. So this part is the inertial part, and this part is coming from the force or non-inertial part. And the, uh, the inertial part is given in that way, which is not unique in nature because of um, two degenerate metrics. A sensible requirement that a fluid has no acceleration and is irrotational when <coughs> considered with respect to the inertial frame. So this is the condition that there is no acceleration and this is the fluid is irrotational. Uh, I want to mention one more point like I have considered on incompressible fluid because the incompressible fluid for is invariant under scale transformation. The Euler equations are invariant under the scale transformation but uh, it is not invariant under the special uh, conformal transformation. So for that reason, if I am considering a conformal fluid dynamics and I am saying the um, in conformal incompressible fluid, so only Galilean invariance plus scale invariance can give the conformal fluid nature. I don't need the special conformal to talk about uh, total conformal group. So for that reason, I have considered incompressible fluid. So the fluid velocity u mu is following this kind of a relations. And then I am defining the fluid variables like expansion, acceleration, shear, and vorticity for a general Newton Cartan frame where I can find that the theta is same, is both inertial part and non inertial part. A mu is only different because of its acceleration and it's, uh, it's existing for the non inertial part. For the inertial part, the acceleration is zero. Sigma mu is also same and vorticity is zero for both cases. Apart from the acceleration, all other basic variables used to describe the fluid are invariant in going from an inertial to a non-inertial Newton-Cartan frame. 
In addition to this basic fluid variables, the description of the fluid requires the definition of the energy moment, stress energy tensor, and other matter currents of the theory. So, to derive those things, I have followed this uh, variation principle as for Newton Carter theory. There is not only defined on degenerate metric, there is one more structure in the connection that is A. So, and there is two, uh, there is a one spatial metric one temporal metric and then inverses. So there are lots of uh, independent field. For the reason I have considered the variation in that way, which was also discussed in previous literatures and was emphasized in Kunzel papers. So here P mu nu, Q mu, J mu and R mu at this stage are merely coefficients to these quantities being varied. Now there are two variations, delta H mu nu and delta tau mu, they are non-gauge variables because they are already fixed for, from the newton carter structure. But this A mu and U mu are the pure gauge variable. So for that reason, I am considering that delta H mu nu and delta tau mu nu is uh, vanishing. And in that set, I am getting these expressions. So to get invariance, delta S has to vanish. For that reason, the G delta A mu will behave in that one, in this one, where delta mu chi is a constant. Now using the expression of delta A mu, the action simplifies to this, and this gives the uh, well-known continuity equation for the matter current, which is grad rho j rho equal to 0. So this is conservation of energy mo there is a, uh, there is, yeah. So this is a conservation of the matter current. So now arbitrary u rho and chi 0 gives r mu equal to j rho h mu rho, which also can I, um, we can get from here. Considering the variation of the, now I want to get an energy momentum tensor from this variation principle, so I am considering the diffeomorphism. So considering the variation of the action and the diffeomorphism, I can write in that way that delta S will take this form. After a bit more calculation, to get a invariance of S, I have to demand that delta S will vanish, which will, which will emphasize on the fact that T mu nu will take up this kind of expression and grad mu acting on T mu nu will take this form. Using the expression of R mu and K mu mu, which we already achieved in the previous transparencies, I can write that grad mu T mu nu will take in this form. This is an important result for a non-relativistic fluids or neutral pattern background or any kind of a fluid because for relativistic case, grad mu T mu nu equal to zero. But for non-relativistic case, there is acceleration coming because this acceleration is generating from the non-inertial part of the neutral pattern theory. So, for to get a consistent result, which is already available in the literature, to match with the, that kind of a constitutive relation, constitutive relation, I have assumed that P mu nu will be this and Q mu will be this, and then the T mu nu will be take the proper form, which is already known to everybody. And this equation is the constitutive relation which expresses the stress energy tensor in terms of energy density, which is epsilon, then pressure density P and velocity u mu and it's the closest analog which one has in the neutral cotton background of the usual expression relativistic stress energy tensor where this form is little different due to the nature of the metric because uh, p is projector operate projector is different for the both cases the factor q the two has been used here to make the trace field condition match the well known non-relativistic condition that the stress energy tensor will be traceless that is T mu mu equal to 0, then we find this condition that 2 epsilon equal to n minus 1 p, that is also an important relation, we is giving that the energy density is proportional to the pressure density. In addition, there is no formal way to define the J mu from the action, normally in, the, in fluid literature there is uh, one, there is, they, the people has been defined J mu in a higher derivative, ex, derivative expansion, so taking the first order derivative expansion, I can express in a, this way that Ji mu is a rho i u mu, where u mu is the velocity and rho is the conserved charge density. So this follows from the zero order result of derivative expansion by Rasmino, Los Angeles and other groups. So for, for ideal hydrodynamics, I have considered only ideal hydrodynamics, so there is no dissipation and one more derived conservation equation is the conservation of local entropy current for the ideal fluid where the local entropy current also can be de uh, defined in similar way like the matter current has been de defined where S is the entropy density of the fluid. So if the system has to be a thermodynamic system, so the requirement is that the entropy has to be non-decreasing during the hydrodynamic evolution such that the entropy current, to, uh, the divergence of the entropy current will be non-negative. 
So now I will discuss about the fluid dynamics of oil extend the Newton water network, which I found as a appropriate car background for scale invariant field theories. So at first I introduce a oil covariant formalism suited to the study of non-relativistic conformal incompressible fluid. The relativistic version was already uh, is uh, first discussed by Logan Agam in his paper, and I followed his work and then I did the oil covariant formalism. So important feature of the incompressible fluid is that I can talk about the incompressible fluid is conformal only depending on the scale invariance. I don't have to uh, think about the special conformal one as I am considering the incompressible. So now the variables which are defined in for the fluid uh, on uh, Newton pattern background now will be modified in this formalism. Now due to conformal nature or due to inclusion of scale, the theta, a mu, uh, sigma and omega all will change. This one. All will be modified, modified and uh, due to this B terms. Now we require a conformally invariant derivative D such that I can incorporate the non-metricity. For the normal non relativistic case or for the relativistic case, the metric is uh, non the metric is giving a non-metricity condition. So I want to get rid of from that non-metricity condition. So I am de defining a conformally invariant derivative D in such a way such that this D mu will be that mu plus omega B mu, where the omega will be the conformal O. For every specimen, whatever I have, uh, every quantity, I have to now determine the omega. So I can find that I, if I am uh, defining the covariant derivative in that way, so I can get now, I can uh, uh, reduce the <coughs> matricity, so d mu h mu nu and d mu tau mu will be zero. For relativistic conformal fluid dynamics, additionally the conformal acceleration and expansion are assumed to vanish which leads to a condition on d mu. But for non-relativistic case, due to non-inertial part, these two things are not vanishing. So for that reason, I am not. I am taking that u mu d mu u mu and u mu grad mu u mu is a mu. I am not imposing any condition on any constraint on it. I am just making it general. Following this fact, that scaling dimension of u mu is two, as u mu is uh, depending on time, and time is getting scaled as two times. So the requirement of d mu u mu zero is leading this condition. If somebody makes this condition, then they can use this. But using the while covariant derivative, the non-relativistic fluid mechanics also can be cast in a manifestly conformal language. I can construct a demand tensor from this using this initial formula, where the f mu nu is this term is generating due to the conformal nature, and f mu is the one for the two form, which is that mu b nu minus grad mu b nu. And this uh, r lambda mu nu sigma is introduced in my paper, which I have been written here due to the long nature. So let us now use this concept for the description of the conservation equation of the stress energy tensors. So for this case, and now the stress energy tensors will be changed. This is the for normal Newton cotton one, and these two terms are coming due to the widely scale Newton cotton background. This expression leads that T mu T mu nu equal to grad mu T mu nu, provided that T mu nu is stressless and T mu nu has a conformal weight of m. These are the same conditions which are uh, derived in the relativistic case. So there is a match between relativistic thing and non-relativistic thing, non-relativistic systems. So now I am considering that how the covariant derivative is acting on J mu, and I found that the J mu, the bad mu J mu is taken in this form. So if the D mu J mu has to be zero, so then the J mu will have a weight of conformal weight of n plus one in my formalism. So then I am reproducing the original continuity equation in a conformal language. This results differ from the relativistic case where the, uh, the conformal weight of a JMU is n, but here it is coming n plus 1 due to this anisotropy between time and space, the scale, anisotropy between the scaling of time and space. So as JMU, I can express JMU as a rho u mu, and JMU is a dimension, scaling dimension of n plus 1, and u mu has a dimension, scaling dimension of 2. From that fact, I can derive that the uh, weight of the density rho y is n minus 1. So uh, weight of the entropy density AC is also n minus 1, following the fact that this u mu is 2. For arbitrary dimensions, if if, if, if uh, we are not taking z is equal to 2, if it's arbitrary z, then we can get that the weight of the weight of the current will be current j mu will be n plus z minus 1. 
So when I am discussing about the fluid of an equilibrium on the background, I have to consider it as a thermodynamic system. And for a conformal thermodynamic system, the only scaling parameter is temperature and chemical potential. So now I have to define the, the conformal weight of temperature and chemical potential. So to get a proper thermodynamic system, the entropy current uh, coherent variable, epsilon of coherent derivative of entropy current has to be greater than zero. It has to be non-negative, which follows from the single law of thermodynamics. I will reproduce these results in a conformal language also in the uh, while covariant formalism. So first law of thermodynamics can be written in a conformal language in terms of while covariant derivative, where this this is differing only this oh, one half factor is differing from the relativistic case because for the relativistic case epsilon is Proportional to P and here is one uh, extra coefficient of 2 is coming due to anisotropy. So the first law, of, first law of thermodynamics has been modifying by relativistic one by this factor. And uh, from this relation I can, I have already produced that d mu j mu is 0. Uh, this conservation equation has been already produced. But following this relation I can, from this I can produce that this term is also 0. So, and if I am considering the d mu t mu nu, d mu t mu nu is not 0, that is proportional to n t mu nu because the t mu nu has a weight of n, but u mu d mu t mu nu is 0. So, this is giving that u lambda d lambda t equal to 0. So, if I am computing those two facts in this equation, then I can get that t u lambda d lambda is equal to 0. So, this is the entropy action of covariant derivative on the entropy current in a conformal language. So we have found from the first law of thermodynamics that T and e mu i are both has conformal weight of 1 just as in the relativistic case. So here I conclude uh, my transparencies. So the conclusion is the scale transformation was successfully included in the localization scheme for a non-relativistic field theoretic model. As a consequence, we got a massive matter fields which are invariant on the Galilean and scale transformation coupled to a curved background. Then through the identification of the fields introduced at the time of covariant derivatives, I can found that the curved background possesses all the properties of a wide scale neutral curtain geometry. And then as an application that how the other fields behave on this background, we I consider a incompressible fluid and I can give a proper conformal set setup, I can make a proper conformal setup for this incompressible um, fluid in the stress frame. So that this is I am concluding my talk and the other expressions of R and C's are given in this is the fields. So. Okay, so basically cover a thesis, I guess. And uh, are there any questions? There, there, there was this conjecture by Kovtun, Saad, and Starinets about uh, the shear, shear viscosity and the temperature and the entropy. I wonder if this this was this was done in a in a relativistic model. Yes, so it was just a conjecture because that relativistic model is not valid. Yeah. But then there was this beautiful paper by Bekenstein and his collaborators where he showed that for many fluids, in yeah. fact, there is this relation that the velocity is less than two pi. And so I wonder if these things can be looked at in this theory. You have a relation. Actually, I, uh, I saw that. Right. Yeah, I have considered the ideal fluid. So, for the reason the viscosity or the viscosity is uh, not coming in that way. So, I will consider the dissipative, dissipative fluids and vis the viscous fluid in my that be next one. Yeah. So, then I can, for the reason I have uh, derived that C, the conformal tensor, because in that way, the, in that sector it will be helpful for the ideal fluid part. The, C has not been used, the expression of C has not been used explicitly. But for the viscous or the dissipative part, I can use it. But you, so, you had talked about shear. Yes, I have just talked about like it's a fluid variables, the proper fluid variables which is there. But I have just defined it. But you can still try it, see that. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll try it. Yeah. Any more questions? Well, I just want to, uh, this is an inquiry. Uh, dimensional uh, parameters. Uh, could be used in this context uh, because in ordinary scale uh, uh, 
scale invariance implies that you cannot have dimensional parameters in it. For example, massive particles or others are not. So uh, in your case, I already see a, dimen a dimensional parameter M coming in from the geometry, right? Yes. Uh, so if you in introduce uh, another uh, dimensional parameter in your theory, so uh, some interaction uh, which is not of the pipo type but some other interaction type, which has dimension of its own, does it uh, make any uh, additional contributions? Or I, I, I don't know about that point actually, but at least here the way this mass appeared, yeah. uh, Ravin described in terms of so the symmetry. Yes. But actually, what happens is actually it's not the Galilean algebra or Galilean symmetry which does not really describe Newton Cartan algebra. So it is the central extension, extended version of Galilean algebra, which is known as Bergman algebra. That basically describes the geometry of Newton Cartan theory. So that actually needed that central <coughs> extension term actually is basically the time is not you are not using as the boost, but then you are compensating something to have a geometrical description. And this mass parameter appears uh, that way. I don't know in detail actually if he, if Pravin has thought over it, um, if there are any other mass parameters or any other Dimensional parameters. Again, it will. De I guess it will depend on that what you are trying to get out of it. So, but this is minimal way is this is needed. If you want to couple this Newton curtain to some other Field. physical things, then possibly you need to have it also. But pure Newton curtain is enough with one. Any other questions or comments? Okay, I guess you are free. So that's the